Raise your hand if you've seen this one before, because you probably did. What I am displaying on my screen is from Predict It. It is a betting platform where you can place bets on a variety of uh, uh, issues, I suppose. And one of them is the margin by which Democrats or Republicans win. One of them is who you think will win the presidency. And there's a bunch of other things. You know, you can vote for any other politician in any other race. And there's other stuff, too. The graph on the screen shows Hillary Clinton in 2016 and Joe Biden in 2020 versus Donald Trump. Strangely, it looks like the Donald Trump track and the Joe Biden track are very, very similar to 2016. In that, in 2016, they had Donald Trump very low at the average trade price, meaning the way the bet works is you can buy, I guess, kind of shares and then it pays out a dollar or, you know, so if you win, it pays out the total. Donald Trump was, fa- was, was, was expected to lose. Hillary Clinton was favored to win. Her shares were trading at like 76 cents while Donald Trump was trading at less than 25. But right at the end, where the election takes place, Donald Trump flips and skyrockets and Hillary Clinton tanks to nothing because it became obvious that Donald Trump was going to win. And predicted is showing that Donald Trump and Joe Biden are on a similar track right now. Does this mean Donald Trump is going to win? I don't know. Nobody does. And there are a lot of arguments to be made about why he will or why he won't. I lean towards Donald Trump will win. And I think the media is fundamentally fractured right now. Now, they say, oh, the polls weren't broken, weren't wrong in 2016. Some say they were wrong in 2016. They were both are right. The polls were a little bit wrong. Trump overperformed. He ended up winning the Electoral College because in key states, he won by razor thin margins. A total of 77,000 votes won Trump the presidency in certain key states. You have to recognize that Democrats are not going to, they're not going to make the same as, (laughs) well, I want to say they're not going to make the same mistake twice, but I don't believe it because we've gone through like Russiagate hoaxes numerous times already, and they're still doing Russia. So maybe they will repeat the same mistakes or maybe regular voters will come out and vote. I mean, look, the election in 2016 was such a sure thing that tons of people did not turn out to vote. It's true. They're like, yeah, he's going to win. Who cares? And Trump won. Many of the uh, many people in these swing states probably didn't vote. That's the biggest factor at play, in my opinion. The fact that in, say, Ohio, you may have had some people being like, what's the point of voting? Hillary won. Many of these people may be Trump supporters, mind you. And that's the important point as well. Ultimately, we just don't know. But I want to show you what's going on over at these predicted election markets and what people are talking about. The first thing I want you to see, Joe Biden is favored to win 66 cents. That means if you want to buy a yes on Joe Biden winning, it'll cost you 66 cents. Donald Trump, 38 cents. I'm going to tell you right now, if you buy a bet on Joe Biden, you are a moron. Knowing what happened in 2016, you've got this gambler's fallacy. "Eh, Joe Biden's due. He's going to win this time. They should have won last. You know, Democrats should have won last time. No, 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 no. Let me explain something to you. And it's very simple math. A lot of people will go to a casino, right? And they'll see the roulette table. Do you know roulette? That's where you got the wheel and you got the the red and black uh, tiles and numbers. And then you've got zero and maybe double zero. People will look at the board and they do this at casinos. They'll show you what were the last numbers to come up, odds, even black or red. People will see a streak of, say, black numbers and they'll say red must be due. That's just not how math works. Assuming that because black won over and over again, it certainly must be more likely red will occur is mathematically incorrect. In fact, the inverse is true. Why would it be that you're seeing, you know, odds or evens or black or red come up over and over and over again? It's called a bias in the wheel. And it's a very simple mistake people make. I think people are making that same mistake. Surely the Democrats have figured it out this time. The polls are, were wrong back then. The prediction models were wrong back then. This is the time we're going to win. Maybe it's only been one election. But let me explain. If you go to a casino and you see red straight down on the roulette board, you want to bet red. Now, don't necessarily take, I'll tell you, I'll say this. I would bet red and I'll tell you why. I've read about this to better understand probabilities and how it works in casinos. And the simple explanation tends to be 
there's probably no bias. Sometimes numbers just repeat. It's that it's that simple. However, it's possible there's a defect in the wheel that's resulting in certain numbers coming up more often. Physical imperfections can result in a mathematical bias in favor of one or more numbers or colors. In which case, if it comes up all red, you bet red. If it comes up all evens, you bet all you bet evens. Or I would. That's what I would do. And uh, to be completely honest, I tend to do really well at casinos, typically winning. You know, I think out of like 10 times I've gone to the casino, I've won nine out of, you know, because sometimes I go in and I just get, just get silly and stuff like that. Anyway, the point is, I, I would not bet on Joe Biden. First of all, 66 cents. What do you win? A dollar per share? That's not worth it. You put in 38 cents for Trump. You put in 50 bucks. You win a lot more money, more than double your money. That's worth it, especially considering what happened last time. But let me show you. I'm not here to give you any advice on what to do with your bets. I'm just saying these people are dumb for betting on Joe Biden. Check this out at 538. Donald Trump's not got a good chance to win. They're saying Biden is favored to win the election in all of these circumstances. And it looks like we've got about 22 different scenarios they show a Biden win. Trump wins in these circumstances, but Biden wins in all of these other circumstances, which is creating a very, very strange betting pool. Check this out. First, I want to read a comment from one of the people on the betting, the betting pool web on Predict It. He said, ultimately, the problem with the MAGA apologists is that they stick to the narrative. The polls were wrong. Ha 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 ha. And they were wrong again. Ha, and they are wrong again. Ha ha ha. Here are the five dirty little secrets the MAGA crowd won't tell you. The polls were correct on HRC. Trump overperformed in key swing states where there was anywhere from 10 to 13 percent of those polled who were not committed to either Trump or HRC in the polling. And when the final votes were tallied, 55 percent of them broke for Trump, while about zero for Hillary Clinton. Example in Wisconsin in 2016, Hillary Clinton plus Trump had a combined RCP average that left 12.9 outstanding. This year, it, uh, uh, this year, the number is 6.5, and Trump overperformed in his polling in Wisconsin by 6.9 percent. The polls were slightly off, slightly. They missed non-college educated whites. Plus, there's the margin of error. So when you add it together, Trump did a little bit better. But also, you got you to recognize the Hillary email scandal that came out right before. I mean, there was some October surprises that hurt Hillary Clinton. And Trump, look, he barely, he, he lost the popular vote. He won the electoral votes in a large margin, but he won those states by razor thin margins. If you think Trump is going to win, you better crawl over broken glass figuratively to get out and vote. These are really good points as a counterpoint, mind you. He says, Trump is not more popular than he was in 2016. That's an opinion that I would say is incorrect. Trump's uh, aggregate favorability is a lot higher right now. It's like 10 points higher than when he got elected. And his approval rating is higher now than the it's well above average for his first term. The New York Times posted a story on, on the upshot from Nate, an upshot from Nate Khan saying that Donald Trump's base is bigger. Now, this was before COVID, mind you, but it was bigger last year. That may mean Trump wins this time because he only needs the Electoral College. I think you'd be foolish to ignore all of these polls just because Trump won in one of the scenarios they predicted. Nate Silver didn't do a really bad job last time. He just gave Trump like a 24% 20, a chance of winning. That means Trump could win. He says, Trump's show, uh, Trump's show uh, is at a disadvantage as an incumbent because he has lost the benefit of the doubt by governing the way he claimed Cruz and Rubio would. It's a good point. Donald Trump was an outsider saying, get rid of the cronies. Now he's in government. Has he done a good enough job? There is a counterpoint here. But let me read on. The key number in polling is 49. As an almost universal rule, 3% of a vote for president uh, is thrown away for a third party. So for any given state, blah, 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 he basically says there's a margin of error. And thus, Biden has to hit 49%, which he has in battleground polls. That is why Trump was always in trouble and going to lose in 2020. When the revisionism kicks in and people pretend like Trump gave it away by getting COVID-19 and blowing up stimulus, remember, but the seeds of his loss were laid when he failed to govern as he campaigned in 2016. Trump supporters have pointed this out. Trump is not the bull he was in 2016, threatening to lock up Hillary Clinton. That debate performance was bad. We'll see. But there's a counterpoint, and it's this. Someone responded saying, right, just think about what this poll means, though. The only one to lose on this poll was George Bush, the lowest figure, 38 percent. 
Trump has 56% saying they're better off than four years ago. Right wing populist Tucker Carlson has the highest rated cable TV show in history. Few trust the media like in the past years, especially not with poll data. I've gotten several calls and hang up. They're being disintermediated by the knowledge acquisition process. We just had major riots and protests shutting down normalcy by groups pushing an entirely counterfactual premise. People actually want law and order. And it's not only blue city mayors and leaders who are preventing it. The poll he shows is that right now, Donald uh, under Trump, people feel they are better off than they were four years ago. I think people are going to vote their wallets. I do. I don't think they're going to vote their conscience. They're going to vote their wallets. Young people are going to get lazy. They're not going to come out to vote. He says, George W. Bush, who only served one term, I'm sorry, George H. W. Bush, got 38%. Trump's at 56. People are better off. But take a look at these margin votes. And I will tell you, man, I, I am okay. Okay. Look at this. What will the electoral college margin in the 2020 presidential election be? Most votes. 22 cents for Democrats winning by 150 to 209. They're actually suggesting a Democrat landslide. Now, that to me is bold. I mean, come on, Trump might lose. I don't think Trump's going to win in a landslide. I think it's possible because there could be weird, you know, things that happen. But as the people I've talked to say, it's going to be, you know, Trump's going to win by razor thin margins, maybe. Democrats might narrowly win. But to think that the Democrats are going to win by 150 to 209 electoral votes, meaning they're going to have 400, and that would be huge. That would be huge. And that would fly in the face of a lot of what we see from independent media, from polls, from how people feel. That would be shocking. But that's the biggest bet. That's the expensive bet. That's the bet that people want to make. All right. Well, hey, assuming that's true, 22 cents gets you a decent return, I suppose. So I would be surprised if that was the case. Now, for the GOP winning by even thin margins, it's only a few cents to buy. People are really betting the Democrats are going to take it in a landslide. I'll leave it there. We'll see how it plays out. Next segment's coming up in a few minutes, and I will see you all shortly.